All right, well fast forward like three weeks. This took forever to get these uh, cases in. I was calling constantly, hey, where's the shipment? They were dipping me with the, the tracking number. Oh, I'm out, I'm out of my computer. Oh, I'm traveling abroad. Couldn't get the tracking number. Finally got the tracking order and it showed up three days later. So, you know, whatever happened there, whatever but i got used cases here and um, they seem to be in fine shape not been welded or rebuilt or anything goofy so i'm going to get them all cleaned up and uh, get ready to get this thing assembled now i'm going to take my crank and uh, get that sucker placed in here um, you're going to want to make sure that the dowels these little pins right here those all have to match up and there's a little there's a little pin on the on the actual bearing but i'll show you that in a minute All right, so the crank's uh, laid down in here, so you wanna make sure that seal lines up and that seal lines up, and then this must be like, kinda like a thrust bearing, because that must keep it from moving back and forth, but that's just got this big fat um, little snap ring that, that goes down in there, so that's lined up. And then over here, this little, this little pin goes down in there, and this pin right here, I gotta push him down just a smidge more, rock him down in there. This one, same deal. He's down in that little spot, like that. And then finally this last one. And he's, he's right down in there too. So you wanna get all those pins lined up just so. And then now we can come through here. I'm gonna clean this off one last time with um, brake cleaner, make sure all this surface is cleaned. And then I'm gonna go in with my gasket maker, real thin, and try and get this. You, you, I could have put it on first, but I was kind of worried I was going to smudge it and like put a bunch of fingerprints all in it if this was all coated with with a gasket maker. So I'm going to come in here with with my finger and kind of dab it along there and make sure it's all, you know, sitting just right um, and get it looking good. All right, so sad story here. Um, I got down the road and got the crank put in and was tightening down the bolts and then I remembered that I forgot to put the starter Bendix in, it's right here. So you gotta put that piece in, otherwise, and I knew about that, I just forgot. So one of those deals when you don't do it every day. So I take it apart, clean all my bolts, clean all my mating surfaces again, and we'll try this again. All right, so I got the crankcase halves put together, everything's torqued down. Then I got the uh, flywheel cover put on there. Of course, the starter Bendix is in there now, as opposed to not being in there like earlier. I got the starter bolted up and then the two rear um, motor mounts bolted up. So various amounts of ride Loctite, uh, thread sealant and other different things. Um, here's the pages that I used to put this all together. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to look at that any closer. All right, so I need gaskets between here and the jugs, and I got these WSM uh, parts. These obviously came in the fully assembled engine, but then were sent later. Um, if you wanna help me out, grab them off of my Amazon link. That's in the description. So if you take this gasket, you need to match up this shape right here, this bottom shape and this shape, and then also the dowels need to fit through. So that's how I know this one goes this way. All right, first thing you gotta do here is oil up the bearing, bearing and get it placed into the small end here. Then take your piston, and I already got my wrist pin in there, so you just kinda work this over the top. Press it in a little bit, and you press it all the way up against the 
circlip on the other side, and you can get this pressed in here. Okay, so we're about to put the um, jugs all together. I noticed this one here uh, is like totally cracked, and then Sam on the back side. Um, not sure what's going on there, but whatever, not my problem, I guess. So we're gonna take this whole system and I'm gonna, with my fingers, compress the rings and then make sure that the rings are centered up on the pins. There's a pin there and there's a pin right there. We're gonna make sure those are all centered up. As we're inserting it, I'm gonna insert this one and then I'm gonna follow with the second one. All right, so this is my exhaust manifold. Um, I cleaned it up, got everything, you know, uh, all the old RTV, which was boogered way down in here, I would say way, way too much was put on, but probably because um, there were some pits here. Some uh, This one here was pretty deep. Um, the other ones were all pretty small, but I still put, uh, what I did was I took some high heat uh, JB weld and basically, you know, mixed it up and then dabbed a little into those little pockets where there's pits and like kind of corrosion marks like these here. And then I took my razor blade and just, you know, kind of screeded it off and made it nice and level. So that should be real, real close. Um, after it cures, of course, then I'll put that on. Um, with the gasket, should take up any additional variation there. So, um, yeah, that's, I guess, the best I can do there. So then the other thing was these little ports, there's like a barbed port for the, this is the pulse line, pulse uh, port basically right here. And there's this little barbed uh, piece that sits in there. It looks like this guy. And it sits down, down inside that. And uh, these lines are on here. Well, anyway, I couldn't find any line to replace this here locally. And I'm kind of running out of time on my project here because of reasons. So anyway, what I ended up doing is just taking this, kind of scuffed up the bottom, um, like like right here, this area, and with like some Scotch-Brite, and then I put it in there with some uh, JB Weld. So hopefully it holds in there, you know, plenty good, and it should be fine. So that's some high heat, uh, some of this here, JB Weld, so that should be fine. So that'll take a minute to set, and not the end of the world. Um, I'm gonna get the reed valves in this thing, and also the retaining plate. All right, so if you watched my reed, um, valve uh, installation replacement video you'll remember that there was an orientation to this so I just got to make the two pedal one go down and the four pedal one go up and then I got a freshly cleaned up retainer plate here So I got this plate installed, torqued down, everything's good there. And then I added my little gasket here. This is for the carburetors, of course. And you want this little hook to actually hook. Of course, if it was flipped around, it wouldn't be doing anything. And then also this little slot right here matches up with a slot on the back of these carburetors. Right there, you can see that slot that goes across. So just use those context clues to kind of get everything sorted. And then we'll hook up our pulse lines. Alright, so I got about 75 zip ties put on here, but I got my accelerator pump line that was put on in the carburetor video, my pulse line one, pulse line two, and then fuel return um, and uh, delivery. So uh, I think I got this all set up. Just make my two uh, fuel connections right here. Um, I think we're doing all right. We have to look at the parts pile and see what's next. Now that the carburetors are installed, the hoses are all checked over, everything's down to just a handful of connections left. Uh, I think it's time to put it in the jet ski, and we'll have to catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.